Hi, my name is Romeo, and people always ask me, working in radio, you get to meet a lot of artists and singers. Who haven't you met yet? What superstar haven't you met yet? And I gotta tell you, my answer might surprise you. It's not an artist or a movie star. Today we're here at Children's Hospital Boston. Yes, this is Children's Hospital Boston. It looks like an aquarium. I want to introduce you to somebody I'm very proud to call a friend, Dr. Leonard Zahn. He is working on groundbreaking research to help kids all around the world with pediatric cancers, all sorts of horrific blood disorders that a lot of kids suffer with. Today we're going to find out how these zebrafish can actually help. So this is actually my laboratory uh, at Children's Hospital of Boston. Uh, it's on the seventh floor of the CARP building and uh, this is a place where we do a lot of experiments around uh, blood stem cells and stem cell biology and uh, it's one of the top places in the world to do research. I'm a blood specialist, a hematologist, and so when I see children who have blood diseases or leukemia, um, while I'm seeing them I'm thinking, what are the questions, what's happening in their body, and is there anything I can do to actually transform that disease to something that's very benign and not so painful. And so um, I come back to the laboratory and I start thinking of experiments and doing experiments uh, that will actually help those kids get better. So people always hear the term bench to bedside. Yeah. So here's the bench yeah. and whatever's not working over at the hospital bedside, you come back over here and say, why isn't this working? Yeah, so for instance, um, we see a child who uh, um, has leukemia and they would benefit from a bone marrow transplantation. And that's a pretty uh, typical procedure that's done, um, but it could be better. So then when I see that patient, I'm thinking, how could I make it better? How could I get those stem cells to land in the right place inside their bones and amplify and start making more blood? And so I come back here and start to work on that exact question. Give us, if you will, a stem cell 101, stem cells basic. Sure, so um, in your body you have organs and all the organs have a function. So the heart pumps blood and you have a gut which takes your food. Um, but basically the idea is that in each tissue there's a small subset of cells that actually have the ability to remake the organ itself and those are called stem cells. Those stem cells have the ability to renew themselves, to make themselves, or they can actually uh, differentiate and turn into the actual tissue that the, the organ represents. So we've been trying to capture those cells and be able to manipulate them to cure a variety of different diseases. The other type of stem cell is called embryonic stem cells. So embryonic stem cells come from embryos, and they're very special because they also can renew themselves, but they actually make every single tissue of your body. And because they make every single tissue of your body, they're very special. We hope that we can use them to make hearts and lungs and tissues that a lot of kids and adults actually need um, where they have a particular disease. What is the big controversy around embryonic uh, stem cells? Well, really, um, it's an ethical issue about when do you think life begins and what is the value of an embryo compared to that of a fetus. What we're seeing in, um, in these embryonic cells are just balls of cells at the time when they're made. You do need to take an embryo and disrupt it to make an embryonic stem cell. So it is true that the embryo will die as a result of that process, but these embryos are extremely early on. And so I think there's a misconception about what people envision as an organism, a fetus, versus what you see as an embryo. And is it safe to say that uh, induced pluripotent stem cells, sort of a good alternative, very close to an embryonic stem cell without the, the controversy? That's right. So um, we're working on these induced pluripotent stem cells, and this technology actually came out of research from embryonic stem cells. So we think it's very important to keep doing the embryonic stem cell research. But what happens is we've been able to take a skin cell, and we could do a skin biopsy from you, and take those cells and put them into culture, and we add into the culture four genes. And those genes actually teach those skin cells to think they're embryonic. Now there's no ethical challenges here at all. Basically those cells are reprogrammed and they think they're embryonic, but all the um, uh, people who would be scared of embryonic stem cells are totally fine with iPS cells. The majority of the research we do here at Children's Hospital is on the iPS cells, but we do think the embryonic stem cells form a gold standard to compare it with. Those cells that think they're embryonic, that used to be skin cells, can make all the tissues of your body. And so we're interested in capturing those cells and turning them into hearts. And I can show you dishes of cells where there's beating hearts in the dish from those reprogrammed skin cells. And in particular for my field, I want to turn them into blood stem cells. It turns out that only half of people can get a transplant, a marrow transplant, who, uh, who would benefit from it. And so we think those new stem cells could be taken from a patient, 
turned into blood stem cells and used, and they wouldn't be rejected, they would be able to survive for a long period of time, and they would actually cure the children and adults of their disease. Let's talk about something I know you're passionate about, zebrafish. Yeah. Tell everybody how you got started in zebrafish. How did you make the correlation between them and blood diseases? Yeah, so it started a long time ago, um, about uh, really 15 to 20 years ago, and we were very interested in finding a model system to study human disease. And um, at the time, I started thinking about um, how embryos are developing, and to have an externally fertilized embryo, so fish embryos like caviar are just outside the body, and so we thought that this might be an interesting system. And then it turned out that we looked for a system, the zebrafish, where each mother has 300 babies every week, and so you can study lots Lots of embryos. So the system uh, seemed attractive, but at that time there was absolutely no infrastructure to be able to do that system. And so I had to invest my entire career on setting up the zebrafish and studying diseases in that system. Uh, and it turned out it was a good bet, and uh, we've been <laughs> able to discover new diseases as a result of the fish, and we've also been able to uh, treat some patients now with therapies that came out of the zebrafish. So it's an amazing facility right now. Um, it's about 3,000 tanks of fish and uh, has about 150,000 fish. Um, if you go on a per fish basis, it's the largest uh, aquaria in the world. <laughs> melanoma is a deadly disease. It's very serious, and many people die from melanoma, particularly if it's spread. So we wanted to study how this disease uh, was uh, affecting uh, humans and whether we could find drugs that would actually interrupt this, uh, the process. This particular fish basically has a human oncogene, a human tumor-causing gene in it, and we've injected that gene into the fish, and the fish developed melanoma. The tumor starts as a little small ball, and then it starts, single cells start to spread uh, from that particular tumor and invade into the tissues. So all we're trying to find is a drug that stops the invasion. And we found uh, one small molecule um, that we recently published is a really good inhibitor of the entire melanocyte population. So basically just kills the melanocytes as they're developing. And what also we found is we could take human melanomas and it would also kill the human melanomas. So this drug, in collaboration with a new drug that's come out that blocks the proliferation of the melanocytes, is going into clinical trial. And the trial will be done at Mass General Hospital and Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, and it'll be done um, over the next couple months. So it'll be a new therapy, again, uh, coming from the zebrafish and moving into the clinic, and hopefully will help people who have uh, metastatic melanoma. And I think any cancer actually can be approached in this system and uh, studied you know, to find inhibitors that might actually block the process. I think a lot of people, myself included, Included, would be so surprised to know that this is going on in their backyard, especially people locally in New England. And a lot of people would want to know, how can I get involved? What can I do? Is there a way I can help spread the word? What can people do if they want to learn more or get involved? Well, we have a website that we just created where um, you see my colleague George Daly and I talking about uh, stem cells. We go through Stem Cell 101, and we also have opportunities for people to interact with us. And so that website is stemcell.childrenshospital.org, and I strongly recommend that you go on the website, and uh, we are very happy to hear from people and talk and go through issues. Um, I'm very interested in educating the public. We want to make sure that the message gets out that stem cell therapy is being done at Children's Hospital and that it's being done in a very responsible, ethical manner, and that the work it needs to move forward so we can get these therapies to children and to adults. Can you see a day when somebody who has diabetes or heart disease goes into a clinic, you know, gets their custom line of iPS cells for whatever their, you know, their genes need reprogramming with, mm -hmm. they do it in a dish, and here you go, here's yours. Yeah, I think we're not that far away for everybody to have their own stem cell line. Um, it's pretty easy now to take skin biopsy from any patient, and we've even been able to do it from a blood sample and turn those cells into a stem cell line. So that could be stored, and then if you develop a disease down the road, we would use those cells clinically and try to cure those diseases. My belief is that some diseases will benefit greatly from this technology, and some may not. And we just don't know right now. So it might be that diabetes or Parkinson's disease in the future would be treated in this way, but it's also possible that only one of those diseases would really respond to that therapy in, in a, the best manner.